j'ai euh, perdu ma mère dans une catastrophe. We were all terrified. We were all crying. Her body was found three days later. So on the 14th of March 2019, I went to school. The headmaster uh, told each and every student to go back home because a cyclone was coming. In the summer of 2021, I decided to go to a camp in the Ardennes in Belgium. And I met an amazing girl there, Rosa. We would like talk all day about how we were going to change the world together. J'ai vu leurs intempéries qui se sont abattues la, la journée du 2 octobre 2020. À ce moment-là, je me trouvais à Montpellier et donc c'est mon oncle qui m'a appelé pour m'informer de violents orages dans la vallée de la Vésubie. Toutes les communications étaient coupées et je n'avais aucune nouvelle de ma mère. On the 14th of July, it started to rain. At the end of the afternoon, me, Rosa and some other friends, we saw that the river, like the stream, was getting wilder and wilder and we had to leave because the building was going to flood. And to get higher up, we needed to cross a field. So when we went to sleep, I felt it was like a shaking and a vibration. I woke up after hearing my neighbor calling my name. He told me that things are not okay outside. People are dying. And the cyclone in that had already killed more than hundreds of people. Il y avait aussi des, des éboulements euh, en bas de la vallée et en haut, donc on ne pouvait plus accéder au village par euh, des véhicules euh, motorisés. Et donc le seul moyen d'y accéder, c'était d'y aller à pied d'un du village, euh, village plus bas. Donc nous sommes arrivés sur le terrain de ma mère pour essayer de savoir si la maison était encore debout et si ma mère était vivante ou non. Et lorsque nous sommes arrivés sur son terrain, il n'y avait plus aucune maison, plus aucune fondation et la rivière passait à la place de la maison. Et elle se trouvait dans la maison à ce moment-là. So me, Rose, and some other friends went outside to the field, but suddenly the field flooded and we couldn't see where we were standing anymore. And I don't really know how it happened, but suddenly I saw Rosa being taken by the water. I jumped into the water, got to Rosa, and I was holding her with one arm. But then even a bigger wave came and she slipped out of my hands. And her body was found. Three days later, seven kilometers further down the big river. We were all terrified, like asking ourselves, are we going to survive this? If we survive, what are we going to do next? What about our friends? What about our neighbors? What about people who have lost their loved ones? Their beautiful land of Shimani Mani had been turned into a pool of dead bodies. Everything was destroyed beyond repair. Four days after the accident, someone just mentioned climate change. Then I really realized that. That was it. This was caused by the climate crisis. You may think that disasters have always happened, that spectacular floods, hurricanes and fires are nothing new. And that's true. But there's something additional called climate change, and that changes everything. The destabilization of the climate is transforming episodic, natural disasters into far more frequent, extreme and devastating catastrophes. The tragedies experienced by Benjamin, Hilda and William are clearly identified as consequences of climate change. Today, it is their lives that have been struck by the violence of climate disruption. Tomorrow, it could be ours. No one will be able to protect us from the destructive power of climate disasters. No one will be safe. There is no going back option. Climate change is already here, but it's still possible to avoid the worst. To do that, we need to take scientific recommendations seriously and leave fossil fuels in the ground. There is no other way. Since 2021, the International Energy Agency has been demanding one clear thing, that no fossil fuel projects be launched. This is the only way to keep global warming below 1.5 degrees Celsius. But this is not the choice Total Energies made. Total Energies is stubbornly sticking to its recipe for disaster, opening up new oil and gas production sites everywhere. It has even become the second most expansionist fossil fuel company in the world. The managers and shareholders of Total Energies are making these choices with full knowledge of the facts. This goes beyond cynicism. This is criminal. Climate change is killing people. Letting the speculators of climate chaos keep on going would be irresponsible of us. 
That's why today, eight plaintiffs and three NGOs, Bloom, Nuestro Futuro, and Alliance Santé Planétaire are taking Total Energies to criminal court. Support our legal action against the directors and shareholders of Total Energies so that their criminal responsibility for the tragic consequences of global warming is finally recognized. Let's take away their license to kill.